We got an episode here. We had to say bye to our favorite tea and coffee. We have a reading mini challenge, a design maxi challenge, a interesting bottom two that I totally agreed with. And child, hmm. It was a solid episode. Solid. Solid as a cue my theme music. Listen. It's your boy Maddie Rand. Thank you so much for tuning into the channel. Do me a favor and hit that like button, share, and subscribe to the channel. Become a part of my Rant Pack family. We appreciate you so much for being here. Let's go ahead and get my social medias out the way so we can get into this episode of RuPaul's Drag Race UK Season 2. Since this season's actually moving right along, unlike Season 13. Ooh, we have a lot to talk about in the panel this Sunday, I'll tell you that. Let's go ahead and get to my s &Ms. Uh, it's at Maddie Rance for Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Cameo. You can book me for requests, shout out, lots of light and love, fun, and all that good stuff. You can also find me at the Maddie Rance on Twitter. If you'd like to donate the channel, please and thank you. That's Cash Up, Dollar Sign Maddie Rance, Venmo, Manadesh Rance, and PayPal.me forward slash Maddie Rance. This week for Drag Race, we don't have season 13. They're going to do sort of a pandemic special, so. I will do my best to make something happen with that. But then Sunday, of course, is the panel, and that's gonna be a good old time, baby. Uh, but let's go ahead and get into this episode. It was solid, I had a good time. You know, 30 minutes of them making shit, 30 more minutes of the judging and everything else that happened, I, I was okay with it. So let's go ahead and get into it. Lawrence just sent a pterodactyl home. That was the joke that Lawrence gave, but sent Tia Coffee home and everybody was a little bit sad. But also, ooh, ooh it's top six, bitch. This is the competition. It's it's starting now. We didn't see this being the top six, but we're okay with it. Shade is in abundance here in the UK and the queens are very much throwing little jabs here and there. Shout out to Ahura and Taste. You kind of ran this episode a little bit for me as far as commentary, questions being asked in the workroom, et cetera, et cetera. Ahora, you started off with, well, who do you think is going home next? I'd say sister, sister. I mean, tiger print on the runway. Predictable. She didn't use those words exactly, but yes, she did. Sister, instead of going to Ahora and doing a back and forth because she knew she couldn't because mama doesn't have no badge, decides to come to Ellie Diamond and say, I think it's going to be you. Lauren says, I think it's going to be both of you. <laughs> Ellie can't believe her name is being thrown out there, but child, you haven't won shit. So it's like, what are you doing? This is top six. You need a badge at this point in time right now. And that's how they're rating this. We have wins in the US, nah, babe. Oh, your shoulder's heavy in the UK. Either way, everyone gives sort of, sort of opinions on this. Half of them do at least cue a bunch of this nonsense, the music, wah, all that kind of good stuff. Bam, we're in the episode, right? Shade still continues to the next day. Ahura and sister are not gonna let up on each other. It's straight up like watching a blow-up doll versus Mandark. It is very that. But let me tell y'all something, how they set up Sister Sister this episode. She said they're sleeping on her and they're gonna have to wake up and I am competition and they need to get ready for me. I'm still in this baby. Girl, it's like they, they, they just set you up. <laughs> it was like, we're gonna create an arc for Sister Sister to win this at Nope. They don't understand what I'm packing. A one-way ticket home. They're still sleeping on me, but I'm gonna wake them up so they can see me go home. Lawrence Cheney, Mrs. Veronica Green, which nobody says at anything at all to. Not a, not a soul. Like, no, we don't. <laughs> I'm like, at this point, top six, I ain't missing nobody. Y'all hoes need to go home so I can win this competition. Take my show. I wasn't gonna say money. This ain't, this ain't that drag race. Take my show to Hollywood and call it a day. And don't forget, Ahura is going to use the same joke throughout the entire episode to Sister Sister. Whose runway look are you going to steal today? The entire episode, Ahura. The entire episode. 
RuPaul pops up on the good old screen giving her 10 seconds of this is what I have to say to then walk into the workroom to actually tell them what she really has to say. RuPaul then introduces the mini reading challenge. The queens must give each other a little shade, a little jab, a little stab, if you will, through humor and comedy and light jokes or heavy ones. RuPaul says this is the first time that these queens are going to be doing this in 3D. Not that we get to see it in 3D, but they're wearing 3D glasses and possibly need to go to the eye doctor after this to check on their vision. Sister Sister wins the mini reading challenge. Y'all are like, Maddie's gonna be a hater on this baby. Listen, not too much longer. I got only one episode left. And I don't hate her. I just, there's something that doesn't sit with me with her. And that's just that. However, I don't agree with her winning this reading challenge. I thought Bimini had the funnier reads. I'll go through some of them with you. The sister, sister, I didn't understand that. I really didn't think nothing she said was funny. Uh, Bimini, her, they were giving out chips, so she was asking for some vegan dip. <laughs> uh, there was a fat joke she threw in there on somebody. And then taste throw in there. Okay. I, I'm, I'm sure some of y'all found that funny. I was, I was like, okay, what, what, what's happening here? Ellie said Lawrence looked like Lady Bunny without a personality, which Lawrence has a lot of personality, so I was confused by that statement. And then Bimini, with this chair dancing skills, she hopes the next one she'll be on is going to be an electric one. Lawrence Cheney, Ellie, you're so stupid, you studied for your COVID test. Boo. <laughs> Ahura has no soul. I was like, this is Lawrence? What's happening here? Like, okay, come on now, you guys. Taste, you, Taste calling Ellie Diamond Ellie Zirconia was actually, f I found that to be a, 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 a hoot. I found that funny. However, for Ellie not to know what a Zirconia is, I know 21, but um, I know little 14 year olds walking around school right now with some Zirconias in their ear thinking that their mom and daddy bought them a diamond and they feeling real special knowing that that, Sucker right here clouds up a bit. <laughs> oh, and she said that uh, Lawrence was well-rounded, so another big girl joke, and the fact that uh, there's a reason for us to stay out of Glasgow. I was like, all right, this is not going well. <laughs> this is okay, I, I'm giggling, but I'm not like Baha'i, right? And then let's not forget Ahura here, who we, we had to know this, y'all. First of all, another double runway joke, this time in front of RuPaul, so that way RuPaul knows, hey, I know what's going on. Cool, right? But then she decides to spill beans or lie about it or whatever they want to lie about because Taste is like, that's not true. But I'm like, girl, is it? Because, I mean, it's, it's, it's often. It's, it's often. It's often, sis. <laughs> Mama said that Taste was laying down with her tongue out while she sat down on that face and rotated, bitch, okay? I, I added a little extra to it, but yeah, eating eating some good groceries, I guess. Uh, that was for shock and awe. That's all I'm going to call it. That wasn't, nothing, that, that wasn't funny. That was just for shock. Like, <gasps> what? And Bimini, who I thought was the funniest one here, had, had me rolling. Sister has a face that someone would throw bricks at. <laughs> a whore, I want to give you a big squeeze. I'm afraid filler is going to spill everywhere. Speaking of filler, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Speaking of filler, sister Ellie Diamond need help packing. <laughs> that was my winner right there. And the rest of them, eh, but you know, I, whatever. Hey, somebody had to have a win. And like Tace even said in her confessional, at least she won something. So the main maxi challenge is a super shiro lockdown. The queens must create looks out of unconventional materials that were used or discarded during lockdown um, and create a superhero character with an original story as, as well as original outfits too. Undergarments, wigs, and heels are all things they can provide on their own, but everything else has to be made from scratch or from all the items that they're given. The sister sister winning the mini challenge allowed her to get a bowl head start uh, for 15 seconds to get the materials needed in order to create a look. For an extra 15 seconds, she still came out tacky. All right, I gotta put this hair up for the rest of this video. It's not gonna work for me. <laughs> this is, it's getting in my face and I'm, I'm losing it. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> like, I like my hair long now, but I'm also like, baby. <laughs> 
I hate that feeling. <laughs> you be just talking all of a sudden, you just feel hair just, just all up in your face. All right, puff up. Let's go through the workroom now. RuPaul came in with somebody. A couple of conversations happened here and there. I'm just gonna break it down because honestly, that was a very long sequence of just, what are you doing? How are you doing? What are you doing? Uh, Sister Sister with that 15 second head start pretty much takes most of the fabric material, including certain uh, items like pillows and this and the other that could have been helpful or useful. There was a funny moment, an actual funny moment from a horror this episode, where she decides to go on her best spy uh, routine here. We got a music and all that kind of good stuff. Her shifting around, looking to see what Sister Sister got from that first 15 seconds. Oh, did she take all the rhinestones? A man dark, ha ha ha, walks up, finding a horror in her shit, and asks, what you snaking around for? Oh, it's just me, the cobra. A horror that was brilliant. She said, what you snaking around for? And you called back with a cobra. You didn't give her some bullshit snake. You gave her a nasty one. I like that. That was ready. A horror in all of her, <laughs> wanna blowy? <laughs> Glory uh, decides to try to compliment Sister Sister in order to get some of those items by not complimenting her, <laughs> by saying her look was good, but not as good as hers. But people still liked it. Can I have some pillows? No. And Sister Sister was happy to know that people needed her items and that she wasn't going to give them to them. Oh. Now RuPaul comes into this workroom with her best friend, Rachel Dolezal. I apologize. Raven, dear God, are you just bathing in Tanner? Like, what's happening here? This, this is not, uh, beautiful. Mug is right, but girl, now girl. <laughs> <laughs> Sis. But Raven comes in with RuPaul and they were giving makeup tips and asking questions and Raven was getting an idea of what she'll be saying for a fashion photo review in a year. Some people got really good advice. Uh, others were just asked quick questions here. Things were said this back and forth. I'm not, I, okay, what's up? Shut up. So now that that's done, we let, let's just break down how these conversations took place because nobody gave actual storylines this episode up until the last minute before they hit that runway. And you already know who that was for because again, they start off the episode talking some mess and now they end in this... Ooh, I love Drag Race, but when y'all be on that storyline tea, I'm like, okay, girl, she's either gonna be in the top or the bottom because you put too much time with her this week. So let's go. Like, they're not gonna make her safe and we had a whole 10 minute, five minute storyline of this is why I'm sad today. Like, they always do that. Like, they need to make sure they're in somewhere near the bottom or somewhere near the top when this happens. Never safe. And when they do make them safe, I'm always like, okay, why do we need to have all that? Like, is this because next week they're going home? What's happening here? It's the formula. Ellie Diamond is very much like, this is my challenge. I am just trying to do something uh, different a little bit. And I want to showcase what I can do because the girls think I'm a filler queen and that I'm not going to have that for the rest of this episode. It's going to be brought up later and it's gonna be an awkward bringing up. And it's gonna be very awkward when I bring it up next time. Like, are we really having this moment? Like, this is really ha this is really happening right now, okay. Lawrence Cheney is like, well, the fabric I got is not really fabric. It's definitely not sewable, but I'm gonna try my damnedest. I'm gonna do something different because normally I make myself look like a 43-year-old woman. And this time I'm gonna make myself look like a 37-year-old woman. Taze decides to use the same sort of brillo -y pad fuckery that Bag of Chips wore last time that looked a goddamn fool on this runway. It was one of my least favorite looks from season one UK. But Taze cuts herself kind of deep in the hand. Like, did you see that cut? That was deep. And then I'm thinking like, okay, girl, I would already be on the plan B or, or something of the sorts. Either way, Taze was, uh, beauty is pain, pain is beauty. This, we're gonna make this happen, and that was that was that was that was the workroom moment for Taste. A lot, a lot of that, a lot of that. I'm gonna try to do something different. Oh, I cut myself. Oh, I'm gonna do this. Oh, I cut myself. Oh, I'm gonna do this. I cut my dick. Like, <laughs> I was like, oh my god. Okay, next. Bimini. <laughs> a couple of leaves in the back, and then we are done. 
Oh, thank God. Uh, Bimini started off with a shit, 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 shit look and then ended up with a nice, decent, okay, we, this is doable look. So I'm glad that uh, Bimini found some fabric and we were going on further from that. But baby, I was nervous. I was nervous for the Bon Boulash. And Ahura is like, if I don't help taste, I probably am going to win this one. And damn Skippy. <laughs> All the money she put into college, it better work and pay in some sort of favor because she didn't win the last one. It's like, bitch, like, come on now, work with me here. I do make beautiful clothes. And Sister Sister took everything, every single thing possible, the, the majority of the stuff that looked really good and still came out with something looking tacky. That was my in-between time in the workroom. There you go. A lot of confidence from some of them where it didn't need to be and a lot of more fear in the ones that did well that were gonna do well. Now the storyline moment was brought to you today by Lawrence Chaney and Sister Sister. So the conversation about being bullied in school comes up for Lawrence and Sister and you know why they were teased and what they wish they could have done and who they are now and how they feel and how it still affects them. Um, I can relate in a certain sense. I would still make it through days where I could like be fine but there were other days where i mean i was talked about trashed i had something thrown at the back of my head before i felt lawrence i understood that conversation i knew where sister was coming from it is a weird feeling like going home dealing with trouble and drama and then you go to school and it's the same thing but with complete strangers and then you don't have a break in between. Or when you did have a break, it was few and far in between. Hearing those stories, that did make me emotional. I've definitely felt Lawrence and sister in that. I just was like, oh God, now that we've heard this, is Lawrence going home? Mm -mm, couldn't be, not with those three. So this must be sister's time because she ain't got shit. And this is now a full moment with, all right. So I said, okay, let's see how this works out, everybody. Mm. Let's talk about our judges, this runway, and get to the rest of this episode. RuPaul Charles, RuPaulinasia. This might be your color. And I, I know Michelle was weird about green before, but we've seen her wear green. We've seen Michelle wear green, so it's like, eh. But, oh, but Ru, this is beautiful. It's a simple silhouette, but it's like the right kind of simple silhouette where it's like perfectly constructed. The wig goes with this. It's not too busy. It's not too heavy. Makeup was clean. This was a pussy look. I love this. Yeah, this was a good, good look. I'm here for this. Here, here for it. Michelle, this, okay. <laughs> this isn't bad. I'm just saying, Michelle, all you missing are some door knocker earrings, girl. They'd have been on. I up on the hot, you know, the one that's up and then doop to doop. Yeah. <laughs> Graham Norton's there looking fabulous as usual. And the guest judge is Maya Jama, who is gorgeous, gorgeous, absolutely beautiful. Everybody, let's go ahead and get into this Super Shiro Lockdown Look Runway. First up is Taste, And I'm not even going to talk about what they came out in to turn around into or whatever. Let's just get into the look itself. Naomi Smalls, what are you doing on my screen for UK Season 2? Maddie, don't do that, bitch. You are lying to yourself if you didn't think that. Girl, that little short pussycat wig with those big, old, with some long arms on something, something, that's a nay nay. That's a, that's a nay nay. That's a nay nay. Um, but let's talk about this. It's not done. It's, it's not complete. Beautiful face, beautiful hair, horrible look. The underwear, especially at the bottom with this Brillo pad shit, I know she was being cut up in some kind of way. I, I, I can't do it. So I was disappointed in this. However, if I were to do something different with this look to make it my own sort of aesthetic or thing, keep the short wig, keep the makeup. If you're going to do the jacket, it should have been, there should have been other elements of fabric or some sort of way to construct it better or to put it on, t you know, for the Brillo shit to be put on top of some sort of fabric for them to, it to be much more of a cleaner look, in my opinion. And I also wouldn't have wore some heels and put a little scrunch a bunch on the top of them. No, 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 no. I had some boots and I had to cover them boots all up in that Brillo shit. It'd have been a full look. I might have made a hat just to be funny. But then again, I wouldn't want to work with something that's going to cut me up. So taste for what it's worth. This was better than Bagus. Yeah, better than Bagus. But a chop. Next up is Lawrence Janey, and Lawrence is serving... This is not my favorite outfit that Lawrence has done. It's a decent look. 
uh, constructed well, especially for the type of material she was using. As soon as I saw it, I was like, Ikea bag down. Ikea bag. Uh, but it's a nice leotard constructed with the corset moment here. Um, uh, it's not a bad look. I'm looking at it now, if y'all see me doing this. Yeah, it's not a bad look. The tickler was kind of stupid. I was like, I don't want nobody doing that with me. I don't need you tickling there. But it, it, it's a nice look. I thought this was pretty good from Lawrence. I thought this was great. Actually, to be real with you, comparing it to some other things here, I thought Lawrence did a good job. Mm -hmm. I don't know what else could be done differently with this. Maybe more or, or not. I don't know. This is very well constructed. Ahura is next, and Ahura's baby, forgive me for not having these names down, girl, but uh, COVID-19, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Bitch, you remember Jurassic Park and that uh, scene where the man was trying to steal the DNA and he ends up getting caught into the ditch, and the one, uh, I forget the name of the, uh, dinosaur comes out with the ah. oh, this is that moment in blue but what made this even better is that she took a whole like let's have this conversation so if you're going to talk to sister sister about stealing your looks for the entire episode and you doing a half blue mask to like give sister sister's teas oh, y'all that was the ultimate flex that was the ultimate flex. I don't care what nobody says. That was where it was the winner for me. That moment right there from a horror, I was like, oh, winner. I was like, immediate. Oh, the blue mask with the red lip, with the whole blue outfit. It, it just looks so damn good. This is Puss Puss. Top tier this episode. Absolutely. Top tier this season, even. This, this look is top tier of the season. Like, in the top tier. I'm not going to say it's the best just yet. We have to look. We have to wait. But yeah, I, mm, 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 it's too good. I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. This was everything. Oh, and before I get on to the next queens, let's give the names of the other girls that came out here, which was Lawrence and Tace. Exfoliana Bolt. <laughs> girl, they're gonna be, you will murder somebody. Exfoliate what, with those? Girl, did you see what happened to your hand? And Lawrence wasn't as special to me. I thought there should have been like a different name with this, but Lawrence said Lawrence of Chania. Up next is Bimini Bon Boulash giving us Dr. Isabella Blows a Lot. <laughs> okay, okay. This was a much better look than what we saw in the workroom that was being worked on the first time. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Oh, Bimini, I'm so happy that you changed that up. This, while I don't get too much superhero from this, but this gives me fashion. This Vivian Westwood moment is quite, this is stellar. I don't think the red was necessary on top of the outfit, but I also realize that it gives sort of, sort of, it gives like dimension to it. It's, yeah, it gives a lot of dimension to it, especially with the red on top versus just being this black dress and it's like, ooh, okay, we're done. No, it's like, it adds a little something to it. The plungers in the back for the booty, I thought were hilarious, um, but... To me, I thought that Bimini looked good. I didn't, I wasn't mad at, no, I, I was a little bit like, really, Michelle? I was, I was happy with the hair. I, honestly, I thought this could have been a horrible look. And I thought that Bimini pulled this out of her, and pulled this out of her blowy. No, I pulled this, pulled this out of her ass. I thought this was really good. Good job, Bimini. I like this look. This could have been so much worse. So I'm very happy. Ellie Diamond as exuberant Ellie. Ooh, I got a sweet tooth for this look. Okay, Ellie. Now, I low-key, high-key, all keys thought you were about to come out in chaps. And I was ready to read and be like, girl, the same thing we've been seeing before. But this is fucking cute. This is adorbs. This is adorable. Adorable. Such, so cute. Like, what a brilliant idea to put the candy on top of the plunger and make it seem like it's this candy apple wand sort of stick thing that's happening here. The wig is right, the makeup is done, uh, accessories on point, puss puss, full marks here. Ellie and a horror were going for it this episode. Absolutely. It was like, oh, this is top tier. I'm here for this. Last and certainly not least is Miss Sister Sister. I like the PJs. Mm-hmm. I did. I was here for the PJs. 
Sister Sister came out as the Garden of Sheedon. I wish this was a better look. I really do. Um, chin up, it's everything. Makeup, hair, right. Everything else, a chop. A, 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 a boo chop, boo, boo, Wendy Testaberg, boo. Sister, this was a whole lot of extra that didn't need to be. And it seemed costumey to the point of it not being like beautiful. Like it, it really did seem like you just threw everything out there. Why were you carrying this gigantic fucking pillow? It's supposed to be a flower. I'm representing the garden. Okay, cool. But this, that just seemed heavy and a lot. And you've already done the same silhouette before with this long leg and this short, um, you know, one long sleeve in the leg. And then the other one is like just a little cut off here. I've already seen all that. That, this didn't look any better either. I know. No, no, no. Mm-mm. 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 No. <sighs> Judging takes place. No queens are asked to be safe as this is down to the six. So it's like, okay, let's talk about all of this. It's clear that Taste and Sister Sister are in the bottom. Taste for not doing enough and it just being this bare concept outfit where it was like, okay, this is just Brillo pads. Where Sister Sister got the feedback of, girl, this is a lot. This is all, uh, uh, this is way too much. You're fun. We like you, but mm-mm. Mm-mm. A whore gets top marks. Uh, so does Ellie Diamond. We see how this is going to go. Lawrence, they kind of gave a little bit too. I don't think Lawrence deserved as much as Lawrence was getting, but you know, it is maybe for TV purposes of them trying to give some sort of like, be scared for Lawrence. Also, Bimini was given half remarks too. Oh, we love that you changed this up a little bit, but you could have fixed this, you could have fixed this, you could have fixed that. But this is great, but you could have fixed those things. So in this case, Lawrence and Bimini are safe. Ahura wins the challenge. Girl, it, now it could have been Ellie or Ahura, but I really did want Ahura to win because when she did a little pop pop with them shoulders, bitch, it was a wrap for me. Uh, I thought Ellie was beautiful too, but something about Ahura's look with the concept alone, it was just puss. It was so good. Um, Untucked wasn't really anything to be real with you, more so taste being taste accepting her fate um sister feeling like i look gorgeous i can't believe they don't get this and then ellie diamond trying to figure out well after today's critiques do you girls still think that i'm just filler and i'm just safe like literally i know you said it i know you said it i know you said it i don't think you said it but i know you said it. this reminds me of the moment when ellie diamond was trying to narrate rupaul to have a saying for her <laughs> because Lawrence was getting all of this attention. I got to tell you this, Ellie, shut up. <laughs> you're doing, you're, you do well, you do very good. Let's be clear though, you have come down in the majority of your runways and chaps. Let's be very clear. Your makeup is stunning. Your wigs are always right, but I'm going to tell you this now. <laughs> The, all that in the background, uh, mm, they were nice to you. They were very nice. They were very nice. Other girls would have ate you up for that. Like, really still saying I'm filler queen? Girl, I, we're, if we're talking about the last couple of episodes, yes. Safe, 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 safe. Let's talk about it. Not one badge, bitch. Safe. Filler. That's why we said it. What, what's up? What you gonna do? Zirconia? What you gonna do? Like, honestly, I like Ellie, but it was... Ah, I'm like, girl. Wait, 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 wait. What you mean? Yes, bitch, you haven't won nothing. You ancestor, they're gonna call you a filler queen. Like, absolutely. <laughs> Regardless of that, I still think Ellie did a great job this episode, even though a whore did win. Taste and sister, sister in the bottom, and they must lip sync. Oh, I wonder who is going to win. The song is Don't Be Hard on Yourself by Jess Glenn. I actually like this song a lot. This is the part where I start talking about the lip sync itself. And this person did this, and this person was doing this, and this person was taste one. All right? Y'all can do this candy one and Simone one bullshit somewhere. Uh, nope, I don't need it. Taste one. Period. End of discussion. That's what just happened. With this outfit falling off and all this kind of mess here, sent her home. Sent that lady home, baby. Sent her home. Don't, you can, nope, on someone else's comment section, not this one. Taste one, period. End of discussion. Wore her out. 
sister was just dancing like she was in the club and that's cool and I'm always here for people in the club dancing but mama had to look down to walk everywhere it was okay this left right all right we're back in the front again Taste over there moving and grooving and doing what she needed to do I was like all right you better be doing these bird movements Taste was doing a lot of this I was like where is she flying to but yeah Taste one. there was this part where Taste did a I'm not going to call it a dip. That's not a death drop. It's not a shablam. Mama slid to the ground. Like, did y'all see that? It was like this weird slide. It was, I was so confused. I was like, wait. <laughs> she was like, yeah. <laughs> it was pretty how she slid into it, though, because it was, again, like, right with how the position needed to be, all that kind of good stuff. But I still found that to be a giggle because I was like, what about that was a dip, girl? She low-key fell in installments. She low-key gave like a slight, whoops, I slipped on a banana peel, but I want to go down real sexy. Like it was very that. And so Taste wins, sister, sister, sashay away. Five queens remain in the competition. We have Ellie Diamond. We have Taste, Bimini Bombalash, Lawrence Janey, and Ahura. Ooh, girl, we are almost to the finale of Drag Race UK season two. Tell me what you think of this week's elimination. Tell me what you think of this week's runway. Who were your tops? Who were your bottoms? What'd you think of the lip sync? What'd you think of this episode in general? And how are you doing? Okay. <laughs> Thanks again for tuning in, everybody. It's your boy, Maddie Rance. Drag Race Season 13 is taking a break this week to show a pandemic special. I will try my best to get a 10 to 15 minute video out about that for tomorrow. Sunday will be the panel and I need to get to WandaVision. As soon as I'm done editing this, I need to watch my WandaVision today. Yes, yes. All right. Thanks again for tuning in. Hugs and kisses. My best love and wishes to you. It's your boy, Manny Rance. I will talk to y'all later this week or this weekend. All right. Bye, everybody.